Chapter Twenty Four of The Rover Boys on Land and Sea by Arthur M. Winfield. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. Chapter Twenty Four In Close Quarters. Slowly, Dick came to his senses. He remembered little or nothing and only knew that all was dark around him and that his head was spinning like a top. For several minutes, he remained quiet trying to collect his thoughts. Then he sat up and passed one hand slowly over his forehead. Oh, how my head aches, he murmured. It was fully five minutes before he felt like moving around. Then he arose and took a step forward and stumbled over old Jerry's body. Oh, he murmured and felt of the body in the dark. Who is this? Can it be Jerry? He asked himself. Then came a recollection of the cowardly attack, but what had followed was a blank, and he could not imagine where he was. Dick remembered that he had a match safe in his pocket, and soon he made a light. By this he caught sight of a lantern in the brig and lit it. Then he bent over old Jerry and saw that the sailor was still alive, but suffering from his treatment. He must have been attacked, too, murmured Dick. The bucket of water was at hand. He took a drink and bathed Captain Jerry's forehead. It was fully half an hour before the old sailor felt at all like himself. Both sat down to review the situation. The cowards, said Dick. What do you suppose they attacked us for? Can't say as to that, replied old Jerry. Perhaps Lesher wanted to show us he was master. He'll settle with me if I ever get out of this hole jerry what place is this the lock-up of the golden wave i think it used to be an oil room they gazed around them and soon discovered the can of ship's biscuits and also the beans they evidently mean to keep us prisoners for some time said dick hark what is that both listened and made out the sounds of distant thunder and heard the patter of rain on the deck a storm is brewing said old jerry it sounds as if it was putty heavy too they tried the door to the brig but found it locked and bolted in vain dick kicked against it and shoved with his shoulder it refused to budge this looks as if we'd have to stay here at least for the present said dick with a sigh i must say i don't like the prospect how long do you calculate we've been here lad there is no telling unless by my watch but when he looked at the timepiece he found that it had stopped they ate some of the biscuits and drank some water and rested for a while longer outside the wind blew furiously and they heard the rain and the waves dash in all directions then some water came trickling in slowly at one corner it seems to me as if the wreck was shifting cried dick presently it won't shift very far in this bed of sand, but she may break up and go to pieces, added old Jerry. If she goes down, we'll be drowned like rats in a trap, said Dick. We must get out somehow. They talked the matter over and began a systematic examination of their prison. The four walls were solid, and so was the ceiling above them. The flooring has a couple of loose planks in it, announced Dick. If we can get them up, where will the opening lead to? The forward hold, lad, and that is now half full of sand and water. Never mind, I'm going to get the planks up, if I can. With his head still aching, Dick set to work, and old Jerry helped him. It was no easy matter to shift the heavy planking, but after a while they got one plank up, and then used this as a pry to bring up the second. A dark hole was revealed covered at the bottom with water then dick took the lantern and let himself down cautiously the water is only about a foot deep he announced i'm going to make a search around with the lantern hold on i'll go with ye cried old jerry and came down with a splash with great caution they moved around the hold wading through sand and water and climbing over boxes barrels and crates what a mixture of cargo said dick and what a pity so much of it is going to ruin and he pointed to some valuable mining machinery which was rusting in the salt water 
fortunately old jerry had been in the hole before the golden wave was wrecked so he knew something of the surroundings he led the way to some boxes directly beneath the forward hatch i don't reckon the hatch is fastened down he said and if it ain't we may be able to shove it up by standing one box on top of another this was tried and after much difficulty the hatch was thrown to one side and they crawled to the deck of the schooner i'm glad i am out of that ejaculated dick but how it's raining let us go to the cabin for shelter once in the cabin they proceeded to make themselves as comfortable as the state of affairs permitted with no boat it is going to be no easy matter getting back to the house said dick he was much worried concerning the girls we'll have to stay here until the storm is over said old jerry but dick demurred and at last it was decided to try getting to the house by journeying from one island to the next this was a dangerous proceeding as we already know they had to build themselves a small raft and carry this from one crossing to the next by the time the last crossing was made the storm was clearing and the day was drawing to a close we had best not show ourselves until we are sure how the land lays said dick as they came up the beach captain jerry thought this good advice and they proceeded with caution until they came in sight of the house then dick set up a shout tom sam and captain blossom are back hurrah they look as if they were having a row with baxter and the mate came from old jerry a row certainly was in progress and as they came closer they heard tom talking yes lesher i want to know all about this quarrel with my brother dick i am sure he was not in the wrong see here i know my own business the mate growled you shut up and leave me alone we won't leave you alone came from sam we want to know the truth yes tell us the truth lesher said captain blossom sternly all against me ain't you we want the truth answered tom well if you must have it all right he got cheeky and hit me on the head with an oar then i hit back and knocked him down then he got mad and so did jerry tallman and both refused to come back in the boat with baxter and me i'll wager you started to boss things said sam dick doesn't raise a row without just cause good for sam murmured dick your brother was entirely to blame grunted the mate he was still far from sober jack lesher you tell what is not so said dick loudly and joined the group followed by old jerry had a bombshell exploded lesher and baxter would not have been more astonished they stared at the newcomers as if they were ghosts how uh, how did you get here stammered baxter while the mate continued to stare in an open-mouthed astonishment that is our affair responded dick he strode up to lesher you miserable villain how dare you say that i was to blame when you attacked me without warning take that for what you did and hauling off dick hit the mate a fair and square blow in the nose which sent lesher flat on his back End of chapter twenty four chapter twenty five of the rover boys on land and sea by arthur m winfield this librivox recording is in the public domain reading by matt perard chapter twenty five trying to come to terms as the mate went down the girls gave a scream and even tom and sam looked at dick in wonder never had any of them seen the eldest rover so aroused my lad that was a hard blow observed captain blossom as jack lesher lay where he had fallen not half as hard as the blow he struck me answered dick not half as hard as that chap hit me put in old jerry and turning quickly he flew at dan baxter and bore him to the ground hi hi let up roared the bully let up take him off i'll let up when i'm done panted old jerry and he gave him a thump in the cheek another in the eye and a third on the chin now then dan baxter see how you like that and then the old sailor arose once more 
I'll I'll began Baxter in a terrible rage. I'll Shut up, Baxter, until we hear what they have to say, put in Tom. If you are not quiet, I'll give you a thumping on general principles. No more fighting, commanded Captain Blossom. Dick Rover, tell us what happened on the wreck. Dick told his story, and then all listened to what old Jerry had to say. In the meantime, Jack Lesher arose unsteadily to his feet. Where is that boy? he roared. I'll fix him and then he made a movement as if to draw his pistol, but discovered that the weapon had been taken from him. "'Who took my pistol?' he demanded. "'Be quiet, everybody,' said Captain Blossom. "'Lesher, there will be no shooting here unless I have to make an example of somebody. You had no business to attack Dick Rover on the wreck, nor attack Jerry Tolman, either. It was a mean thing to do. If we are to remain on these islands together, we ought to keep friendly.' i know my business growled the mate and i know mine lesher please remember that i am captain and i am first mate your being first mate doesn't count with us came from tom not for a minute added dick if i had my own way i'd pitch you out of this camp in double quick order and dan baxter with him put in sam why can't both of them go and live with the other sailors who were saved asked dora they could have their share of what is on the wreck i see you don't care for their company said captain blossom well i can't say that i blame you miss after this they shall keep their distance they can either live on the wreck or build themselves their own house and so can the other sailors who were saved you are not my master cried dan baxter on these islands all are equal that may be so but you have got to let the others alone answered dick if you don't what will you do we'll punish you in a way you least expect after this there was a general talk which almost ended in another all-around row. but the rovers and captain blossom were firm and at last dan baxter and jack lesher said no more we ought to remain on guard after this said dick to tom when they and sam were alone i don't want to trust our enemies for a single moment and it was agreed that one or another should watch constantly the storm cleared away as suddenly as it had come and the next morning the sun shone as brightly as ever when baxter and lesher came to breakfast both were sullen the mate had wanted more liquor, but Captain Blossom had refused to give him more than a single glass. "'You had better return to the others at once,' said the captain. "'Tell them they can come over here, and then we will make arrangements as to how all hands shall live until some ship comes to take us away.' The rover suspected that Dan Baxter wished to remain behind, leaving the mate to go after the others. But Lesher would not go alone, and off they started at noon each carrying a good supply of food with him and also a pistol and some ammunition i wish they weren't coming back murmured dora i wish the same dora said dick but it can't be helped and we must make the best of it there was a general air of relief when the two had departed later on each told his or her story once more and a general conversation ensued regarding the future lesher is not the man i thought he would be said captain blossom if he insists on getting drunk he will surely cause us a good deal of trouble and if i try to keep the liquor from him he will get ugly more than that he has several sailors with him who are old friends and they like their liquor just as much as he does it was seen that the flag of distress was down as already mentioned and after baxter and lesher had departed tom and dick set off to put the flag up once more the way was by no means easy for the storm had washed the dirt and stones in all directions and the path was strewn with broken branches and torn up bushes on the way they picked up half a dozen dead birds and also saw three dead monkeys when the spot where the flag had been was reached they found the tree still standing the halyard of the flag had snapped and the colors lay in a mass of bushes a hundred feet away to get to the bushes the boys had to leap over something of a gully tom took the leap 
in safety but sam went down out of sight help help cried the younger rover tom looked back to see sam's fingers clutching at some brushwood which grew at the edge of the gully then the hand disappeared and he heard a crashing far below for though the gully was not wide it was very deep sam sam he called are you hurt no answer came back and much alarmed tom got on his knees and tried to look into the opening at first he could see nothing but when his eyes grew accustomed to the darkness he made out the form of his brother lying on some broken brushwood which the storm had swept into the opening how to get down to sam was a problem and tom was revolving the matter in his mind when sam let out another cry are you hurt sam not much but in my wind was not knocked out of me can you climb up to the top hardly tom the sides are very steep and yes there is a regular cave down here went on sam a cave yes where does it lead to i don't know it's on the south side of the opening tom's curiosity was aroused and bringing forth the new rope they had brought along for hoisting the flag he tied one end to a tree and lowered himself to his brother's side by this time sam was on his feet and inspecting some scratches his left hand had received where is the cave sam there and the youngest rover pointed it out the opening was about two feet above the bottom of the gully it was perhaps four feet in diameter but appeared to grow larger within if we had a torch we might investigate a bit said tom i'd like to know if the cave amounts to anything it might have a pirate's treasure in a day not likely sam i don't believe it has ever been used but if it was of good size it might prove it might prove handy for us at some time or another they looked around and finding some dry brushwood made two rude torches with these flaring brightly they entered the opening the flooring of which was rock and tolerably smooth we could live in this cave if it wasn't that the opening to it is in the gully said sam as they advanced there may be another opening at the other end said tom it is certainly quite long they had advanced fully a hundred feet and now found themselves in a chamber forty by fifty square the ceiling was arched and so high that they could not touch it without jumping up this is as good as a house said tom see how dry the flooring is that proves that it is waterproof from the large chamber there were several passageways all leading toward the bay which shall we investigate first asked sam let us start at the right all right tom the right ought to be right answered sam lightly on they went once more the flooring now sloping before them here there was considerable moisture and they had to walk with care for fear of slipping down suddenly a number of bats flew out of a hole near by dashing against the torches and against the boys themselves the rush was so unexpected that each youth dropped his light and put up his hands to protect himself get out let me alone spluttered sam whoop roared tom confound the bats anyway get along and let us alone lying on the flooring the torches soon went out and in their efforts to protect themselves from the bats the boys rushed blindly down the passageway then of a sudden both slipped on the wet rocks slid a distance of several yards and went down and down landing into a well-like opening with a loud splash End of chapter twenty five chapter twenty six of the Rover Boys on Land and Sea by Arthur M. Winfield. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. Chapter 26 The Cave on the Island. Tom! Sam! Are you safe? Yes, but I wasn't looking for such a cold bath as this. I guess we must have fallen into a regular well of spring water. Never mind what we are in the question is how are we going to get out can you touch the top of the opening no neither can i luckily 
the two boys could touch the bottom of the hole so they were in no danger of drowning they were in water up to their waists and calculated they had dropped a distance of two or three yards all was pitch dark around them and as silent as a tomb save for some water which trickled close at hand the bats had departed leaving them to their fate this is cave investigating with a vengeance said tom with something like a shiver never mind tom we won't die of thirst anyway do you think this is a laughing matter sam no i don't but i'd give a good deal to be out of this hole and out of the cave also i've got an idea let me climb on your shoulders and see if i can reach the top that way sam was willing and soon tom was balancing himself as best as he could he felt around with care sam moving from point to point as directed here's a sharp rock i think i can pull myself up on that said tom he tried with all of his strength and went up off sam's shoulders then the youngest rover heard him crawling around the wet flooring carefully when tom felt fairly safe he brought out his waterproof match safe and lit a match then one of the torches was picked up and he lit that but kept it partly sheltered fearing another attack from the bats by the aid of the torch sam was able to reach a sharp rock quite low down in the well hole and when tom gave him a hand he came up with ease both saw that the passage ended at the hole and hurried back to the main chamber of the cave that's the time that right was not right said sam wringing the water from his trousers while tom did the same let us try the left after this i trust we don't get left by it added sam the passageway was small and winding but fairly level there were several sharp rocks to pass and then tom gave a cry i see a light ahead it must be an opening tom exactly what i think both hurried toward it as they did this the opening appeared to grow larger and they saw a number of bushes ahead of them they pushed these aside and saw beyond a clear stretch of the bay and to the northward the house they had built the opening was twenty or thirty feet above the beach and hidden in the rocks and bushes this is a short cut to the beach from the flagstaff said sam i wish we had put up the flag then we could carry the news of the cave to the others let us hurry back sam it won't take so very long to put up the flag with the tree still standing when they reached the gully they were careful that no further mishaps should befall them having picked up the flag they hoisted it once more stars down and then went back through the cave to the beach as they had imagined the others were greatly interested in the news all left the house and visited the place the girls did not go any further than the main chamber but the captain dick and old jerry made a complete investigation taking care not to fall into the well hole or any other unsafe place as the boys say this cave may come in very handy some time said captain blossom in case of a very heavy windstorm it would be a good place for shelter why couldn't the sailors lesher and baxter live here asked dick we don't want them and it will save them the trouble of building a house in case they don't want to live on the wreck no i advise that we tell them nothing about the cave said tom if we should have a fight and get the worst of it we could hide here and they wouldn't be able to find us very readily do you think it will get as far as that asked dora and her face showed she was much disturbed i hope not dora said dick but you must remember that we have had some pretty sharp quarrels already i think tom is right came from sam we'll not tell the others anything about the cave if they don't want to live on the wreck they can build a house or two just as we did on returning to the shore of the bay captain blossom and tom went on a hunt along the beach and presently discovered the rowboat that had overturned with them during the storm the craft was but little damaged and they soon had it mended and then the captain brought it around to the anchorage in front of the house i wonder when baxter and lesher will arrive with the sailors said nellie not before tomorrow night answered tom 
then do you know what i would do if i were you went on the girl what nelly i'd bring some stores away from the wreck and hide them in the cave if you did that it might save us a good deal of trouble for all we know that mate might try to take command and refuse to let us get anything more from the ship do you think he'd do that while captain blossom was around came from grace oh he might do anything when he is half full of liquor answered tom i think nellie is right i'll talk it over with the others tom lost no time in the matter and dick sam and old jerry agreed that nellie's idea was very good captain blossom shrugged his shoulders and looked ugly jack lesher shall not take the command for me he said if he tries it he'll find himself in the biggest kind of a row but you must admit that there is grave danger said dick yes i admit that then you are willing that we shall hide the stores if you want to won't you help us captain blossom of course we recognize the fact that those things belong to you since you remained on the ship up to the time she struck the island the speech pleased the captain and he said he would help them willingly without delay the two rowboats and the raft were called into commission and an hour later the men and boys were hard at work transferring goods from the wreck to the beach in front of the cave five trips were made back and forth the boats and the raft bringing over each time as much as could be conveniently floated by the time the last trip was made and the goods piled on the beach and covered with a large tarpaulin it was dark and all were utterly worn out by their labors the girls had prepared an extra good supper and of this they ate heartily and sat around a little while when they went to bed at the beginning the castaways had kept guard during the night but of late this had been done away with everybody being satisfied that no harm could befall them during the darkness but as the doorway to the house was an open one it had been considered the duty of one or the other to sleep directly in the opening this was dick's night and the eldest rover lay there sleeping soundly until about two in the morning by this time the moon had disappeared and the stars were partly hidden by some clouds the night was quiet save for the hum of insects in the jungle back of the house and the soft lap-lap of the waves on the beach of the bay suddenly dick awoke with a start he sat bolt upright wondering what had brought him to his senses so quickly he listened intently but nothing unusual greeted his ears i must have been dreaming or something he thought but he's queer i should be so wide awake at first he was on the point of lying down again but then concluded to get up and get a drink of water he arose to his feet and stood in the open doorway gazing into the darkness the faint light of a few stars shone in the waters of the bay and between the waters and himself he presently saw a dark form stealing along close to the ground what could that be was it something real or only a shadow dick rubbed his eyes and peered out more sharply than ever it was not a shadow but a real form slowly moving around to the rear of the house an animal or else a man crawling along said dick to himself and reached for his gun which stood close at hand then he made up his mind to investigate and stepped outside of the doorway for that purpose End of chapter twenty six chapter twenty seven of the rover boys on land and sea by arthur m winfield this LibriVox recording is in the public domain read it by matt Perard. chapter twenty seven a fight with a wild beast as dick stepped out of the house gun in hand the form disappeared behind a small clump of bushes growing not fifty feet away it's gone he said to himself but waited patiently with his gun ready for use the clouds were increasing making it darker than ever almost holding his breath the youth took several steps forward then he waited again at last the form reappeared crouched lower than ever so that it was almost hidden by the rocks and low brushwood leading to the jungle at first dick imagined the beast or whatever it was 
was going to retreat to the timber but soon it appeared to turn back as if to make another semicircle this time around to the rear of the house it must be admitted that dick's heart thumped madly in his breast the gun was raised and he kept his finger on the trigger but he did not dare to shoot until he was certain of the object of his aim i don't want to kill anybody he reasoned and he thought of a story he had once read of a hunter shooting his companion who had got the nightmare and was crawling around in his sleep for all he knew it might be sam or tom or one of the others but now came a sound which was not to be mistaken it was a low savage growl followed by the rustling of a bushy tail among the brushwood it was a wild animal and it was getting ready to make a leap for the boy taking aim as best he could dick pulled the trigger bang went the firearm and a snarl of pain and rage rang out then the beast made its leap striking dick in the breast and knocking him over hello what's the row the cry came from old jerry who had been sleeping next to dick who fired that shot help answered dick a wild beast has attacked me a wild beast came from several throats at once let me get a shot came from tom as he bounced out of the house pistol in hand followed by sam and captain blossom by this time dick had gotten to his knees and was trying to fight off the animal which had fastened its teeth in the youth's trouser leg for the boys slept with part of their garments on them shoot him hit him over the head with a club screamed the eldest rover he expected every moment to have the beast fly at his throat and he knew that that would be his death old jerry turned back to get a pistol or a club as he did this tom rushed past him and up to dick's side taking a hasty aim tom discharged the pistol twice another growl rang out and the beast dropped back shot through the fore shoulder and the neck then tom let drive once more and the beast fell forward shot through the left front leg good for you tom cried dick as he arose what is it came from captain blossom as he appeared with a shotgun a shot from this finished the beast and it rolled over and over in its death agonies and sam finished it with a blow on the head with a big club by this time the girls were crowding outside having clothed themselves with whatever was handiest torches were lit and a ship's lantern and all went to examine the creature it looks like a tiger declared tom only it is not quite so large i should say it was a california puma came from old jerry he's a bad one too i think they call them jaguars out here said dick they all belong to the same family you know some old american hunters would call it a painter never mind what it is said dora with a shudder i am thankful that it is dead you can be thankful that it didn't chew dick up added tom he was in a tight corner i can tell you that i didn't want to shoot until i was certain of what i was shooting at answered dick then just as i fired the beast leaped for me if i hadn't wounded it it would have had me by the throat sure but my shot kind of made it fall back and it caught me by the trouser leg are you sure you are not hurt lad asked the captain not hurt in the least answered dick and all were thankful that this was so the animal was dragged close to the cabin it measured about five feet in length regardless of the tail and was of a dull yellowish color its teeth were long and sharp and its face had a fierce bloodthirsty look about it that made all the girls shiver i must confess that i am surprised to find such a beast on these islands said captain blossom usually they are to be found only on the mainland or on large islands what i am wondering is are there any more around came from sam if they are we'll have to be careful how we move around put in old jerry i don't want any of them to leap out at me from behind a rock we'll have to be on our watch said tom i'm sure i don't want to furnish any tropical tiger cat with a square meal oh tom how awful to even mention it cried nellie i think i know a way to keep em away from the house at night said old jerry how questioned several keep a campfire burning close to the door 
all wild animals hate a fire jerry is right said captain blossom we'll do it after this what shall we do with the beast asked dick i don't think it is good to eat save the skin said dora that will surely make an elegant rug leave the carcass until morning said captain blossom we must get some more sleep if we want to go to work tomorrow today you mean said tom looking at his watch it is already three o'clock a campfire was lit and then all but jerry retired it being agreed that the old sailor was to turn in once more when the others arose for breakfast all but dick slept soundly but even the eldest rover was benefited by the additional rest the first work in the morning was to skin the wild beast this was rather a difficult task since no one had had any experience outside of the rover boys on small game old jerry said he would try a steak cut from the best part of the animal but when he did he said it was too tough to eat then the carcass was dragged away and flung into a hole between the rocks after breakfast the men and boys began in earnest to place the stores brought to the beach in the cave it was hard work getting the boxes and barrels up the incline to the mouth of the cave and the work took until the middle of the afternoon once at the entrance the stores were speedily shifted to the chamber previously mentioned and covered again with the tarpaulin with the stores were placed a cask of fresh water some dry pine torches and a box of matches captain blossom left a gun and some ammunition in the cave and the rover boys added two pistols and a couple of swords taken from the ship now we will rearrange the entrance to the cave as it was before said dick then the sailors will never suspect what we have done by sunset the work was over and all hands were back at the house taking it easy supper was ready but they waited half an hour thinking that baxter lesher and their party would put in an appearance at any moment i reckon they aren't coming just yet said captain blossom at length let us wait no longer i'm willing said tom the extra work had sharpened his appetite wonderfully the evening passed quietly and soon one after another retired as agreed the campfire was left burning and each took his turn at remaining on guard in the morning it was dora who made an announcement that startled all of them the girl had taken captain blossom's spyglass and was looking across the bay in the direction of the wreck there are men on board of the golden wave she announced i can see them quite plainly men on board of the wreck cried dick are you sure dora look for yourself dick the youth did so and saw that dora was right half a dozen figures could be seen walking to and fro who are they asked tom lesher and his crowd that i can't make out answered dick and handed over the glass to his brother all could see the men on the wreck but at such a distance it was impossible to make out any faces maybe they are savages came from grace no they are dressed like white people said captain blossom perhaps another ship has come in ejaculated tom if it has we are saved i don't see any other ship said old jerry it may be on the other side of yonder island came from sam the best thing we can do is to row over and investigate said captain blossom if another ship has come in the captain may claim that wreck and everything on board a hasty breakfast was prepared and eaten and it was agreed that the captain dick and old jerry should row over to the wreck in the best of the boats the three were soon on the way wondering whom they were to meet and what sort of a reception would be tender to them End of chapter twenty seven chapter twenty eight of the rover boys on land and sea by arthur m winfield this LibriVox recording is in the public domain reading by matt Berard. chapter twenty eight the mate shows his hand captain blossom had taken the spyglass along and as they drew closer to the wreck he gazed long and earnestly at the men walking the deck of the golden wave they are my crew he announced at last 
and they are in tatters they must have had a hard time of it since you were cast ashore said dick unless i am mistaken not a one of them is sober went on the captain they are cutting up like a band of wild indians before long they were within hailing distance of those on the wreck then a voice from the rail hailed them boat ahoy ahoy answered the captain what do you want demanded the sailor on the wreck he could scarcely talk straight we want to come on board sorry cap'n but i can't let you come aboard answered the sailor with something of a hiccup can't let me come aboard repeated the captain why not cuz it's against orders whose orders captain lesher's captain lesher ejaculated captain blossom indignantly how long has he been a captain we made him captain yesterday that's right put in another sailor we elected him you know now unanimously yes sir unanimously you are drunk bostwick no sir i ain't drunk at all lesher he's drunk but he's cappin all the same that's right put in a third sailor hurrah for captain lesher and the rum he let us have got to keep off i tell you went on bostwick if you don't we have uh, we have strict orders to fire on you yes sir to fire on us cried dick do you mean to say you would fire on us now see here don't you put in your oar said a fourth sailor you don't count with us is the captain that was we're talking to i am captain still said captain blossom firmly if you don't want to obey me you must leave the ship ain't gonna leave no ship was the cry she belongs to us you keep off yes yes keep off the ship is mine said the captain if you refuse to let me come on board at that moment two other figures appeared on deck dan baxter and jack lesher murmured dick captain blossom you had better keep your distance said lesher in a voice that showed he was just getting over a spell of drunkenness so you too refuse to let me come on board i do the boys have made me their captain and as such i am bound to look after their interests i have told them what you propose to do and they don't intend to stand it didn't i tell you we'd get square put in dan baxter his evil face glowing with triumph we have all that is on board and we mean to keep everything this is mutiny stormed captain blossom call it what you please answered lesher recklessly i reckon i and the boys know what we are doing that's right cried the half-drunken sailors hurrah for cap'n lesher he's a man after our own hearts supposing i demand to be let on board went on captain blossom don't ye go cap'n whispered old jerry they are in just a fit mood to kill ye the rum has put the old nick in em ye can't come on board and that settles it roared jack lesher drawing a pistol keep your distance yes keep your distance added baxter and also showed a firearm this is a fine way to treat us after what we did for you said dick but wait baxter the end is not yet bah i am not afraid said the bully these men are all my friends and we know exactly what we are doing do you expect to remain on the wreck asked the captain after a moment of silence that is our business answered lesher i think you will find that you are making a great mistake men to follow lesher when you ought to follow me i have always treated you fairly and ha none of that roared the mate we won't listen to it the men shall listen if they will i say another word and i'll fire cried the mate and pointed his pistol at captain blossom's head do you mean that 
asked the captain in as steady a voice as he could command of course he means it said dan baxter he isn't a fool we are all going to stand by him too he added that's right came from part of the crew dick noticed that a few of the others looked doubtful i mean it and i want you to leave right now stormed jack lesher i'll give you one minute in which to turn your boat around and he pulled out his watch might as well go back whispered old jerry you can't reason with a lot of half-drunken men very well we'll go back said captain blossom loudly but remember you haven't seen the end of this affair and remember another thing added dick in an equally loud voice don't any of you dare to come anywhere near our house if you do you'll be sorry for it then the three turned the boat around and rowed slowly back whence they had come the rascals muttered captain blossom when they were out of hearing lesher and baxter have poisoned the minds of the crew against me and have bought over the men with liquor it's a mighty good thing ye put them stores in the cave came from old jerry if ye hadn't we'd be a wantin a good many things in a few days that is true answered dick dora told me they must have another barrel of flour by day after tomorrow. how many at the cave two well it certainly was a good job done said the captain but it makes me boil to think they want to keep me off my own ship on the ocean that would be mutiny and i could hang every mother's son of them from the yard-arm for it lesher must have told em some putty strong stories said old jerry otherwise the men wouldn't be so dead set again yet cap'n no doubt he made out the strongest possible case i wonder if they will stick to the wreck all the time said dick they'll find it mighty hot when the sun shines oh they'll most likely take some of the things ashore and set up a camp nearby rover we'll have to watch them closely i agree with you now we have two kinds of enemies beast and men and the captain laughed bitterly the others were gathered on the shore awaiting their return and they listened attentively to what was told them oh lesher wanted to be leader you could see that right off declared tom and baxter will do anything to make it disagreeable for us boys he continued well there is one satisfaction said nelly we haven't baxter with us if only a ship would stop here and take us away sighed dora to her it seemed like an age since they had landed on the seven islands after this we must keep a regular guard announced dick unless we do that somebody may play us foul when we least expect it slowly the day wore away by the aid of the spyglass they could see the sailors still on the deck of the wreck nobody appeared to go ashore that night it fell to sam's lot to be on guard from nine to ten o'clock the campfire was left burning brightly and the youngest rover sat near it on a log a gun in his lap no wild beast shall surprise me he told himself and kept his eyes on the jungle back of the house his time for guard duty had almost come to an end when a noise down on the beach attracted his attention by the faint light he made out a raft which had just come in bearing the figures of two sailors stop he called out do not come closer at your peril don't shoot called back one of the sailors don't shoot we mean no harm sam had backed up toward the house and now he called to those within he was soon joined by captain blossom dick and several of the others who is it asked the captain as he came forth pistol in hand two of the sailors from the wreck i think don't shoot us captain called one of the men we are unarmed and want to talk with you they are gibson and morney said captain blossom they were generally pretty good sort of fellows i reckon we have nothing to fear from them are you alone called out dick yes then come up to the fire but mind no treachery we don't wonder at your being on guard said the sailor named gibson a tall thin yankee the others treated you like so many dogs we have deserted lesher put in marnie 
we came over here on the raft to see if you wouldn't take us in were you alone asked captain blossom no we had hackenhaven with us but he fell overboard just as we left the wreck and the sharks caught him answered gibson with a bitter shake of his face what did lesher say to your leaving asked tom he didn't know it until after we were a hundred yards or more from the wreck you see he and the others were drinking in the cabin so we got away without much trouble answered morning they might have shot at us but it was too dark for them we had a hard pull to get over here and when poor hackenhaven was gobbled up both of us felt bad i can tell you it was now seen that both sailors were almost exhausted and captain blossom allowed them to rest while dick prepared a pot of coffee while they were drinking gibson told them the particulars of how the mate had made himself leader of the sailors now left on the wreck End of chapter twenty eight chapter twenty nine of the rover boys on land and sea by arthur m winfield this LibriVox recording is in the public domain reading by matt perard chapter twenty nine the burning of the wreck when lesher and baxter got back to where they had left us they were very bitter against you began gibson they told us that you had tried to make them work like niggers fixing up this house they said that they wanted to come right back and bring us here but you wouldn't let them go until the house was finished which is not true as all of us here know said captain blossom lesher also said that you were angry at us for leaving the ship before the rest and that you had said you would have us all tried for mutiny the first chance you got baxter said the same and also told us that you were going to dump all the rum and other liquor into the ocean so that the mate and none of the others could get a drop of it while they stayed on the islands i didn't say that but i did say that lesher shouldn't have all he wanted replied the captain this sort of talk made most of the sailors wild went on gibson then lesher made a speech to them and they voted to stick by him through thick and thin and not let you rule them he promised them all the liquor they wanted and told them that if they stuck by him the whole lot could swear in court that they had found the wreck deserted so that they could get whatever was coming in the way of salvage then he handed around some liquor he had brought along and some pistols and most of them said they would stick to him as i said before what about going directly to the wreck asked tom that was baxter's idea and it wasn't thought of until we were on our way to this spot baxter said that if we captured the ship we would have you at our mercy for sooner or later your provisions would run out and you'd be begging for something to eat the scoundrel cried dick so he thought to starve us into submission eh well he shan't do it i said i didn't think it would be fair on the young ladies continued gibson but he told me he'd take care of the girls after he had brought you to your knees he'll never take care of me cried dora nor me came from nelly i'd rather die than leave this place in dan baxter's company added grace captain i want you to understand that gibson and i didn't agree to what they wanted to do came from morning but we were overruled and we had to hold our tongues for fear of being knocked down or shot do you want to join our crowd asked dick bluntly we do and if you'll take us in we'll promise to stand by you to the end no matter what comes we know they've got the best of it having the ship's stores but we don't care for that they are a drunken good-for-nothing crowd and we are done with them all right men i think we can trust you said captain blossom it's a pity that hackenhaven was lost overboard and eat up by the sharks we could rather have spared lesher or dan baxter observed tom with three gone they have but eight men left on the wreck said sam and we now number seven men and three ladies if we stand our ground i can't see as we have much to fear from them it will be all right so long as they keep their distance said captain blossom but if they come over here in a body when they are half full of drink there is sure to be a row and probably some shooting still we needn't try to meet trouble halfway 
the sailors gave some more of the details of their doings while in lesher's company and then they were provided with additional clothing and each was given a pistol and some ammunition nothing was said to them about the cave or the provisions stored there captain blossom deeming it best to wait and make sure if they were to be thoroughly trusted you see said he they may be straight enough or they may be spies sent by lesher to find out just what we propose to do they look honest said dick i should trust them the long pull on the bay had worn the two sailors out and they were soon sleeping soundly the girls followed and then the boys started to turn in sam had just gone to rest and tom was following when dick who had stepped out on the beach uttered a cry what's up asked captain blossom look toward the wreck what does that light mean the captain looked and then ran for his spy glass the golden wave is afire he exclaimed that light is coming up out of the cabin the wreck is on fire shouted tom and this cry brought everybody out once more with remarkable rapidity the light grew brighter until the heavens and the entire bay were lit up by the conflagration there was a strong wind blowing which carried the sparks to the jungle back of the ship listening intently they could occasionally hear the roaring and crackling of the flames the ship is doomed that is certain said sam i wonder if all who were on board escaped the fire has caught in the brushwood on the shore announced captain blossom who had continued to use the spyglass can you see any of the men moving around questioned dora i thought i saw one or two but i am not certain most of the men must have escaped but if they were drunk as gibson says perhaps some have been caught like rats in a trap the flames continued to roar upward and toward the island back of the ship for over an hour during that time they heard two dull explosions caused by some barrels of chemicals catching fire the second explosion sent the bits of burning wood and rigging flying in all directions that will leave the mutineers without a home and without stores said old jerry they are in a poor fix now i'd like to know how the fire started said the captain can you explain it he went on to gibson and marnie i've got an idea said marnie just before we came away old man Schuler went down in the hold with a light to look for some certain brand of liquor we were carrying he was more than half drunk and he most likely dropped his lantern and set something on fire at the end of an hour and a half the flames had died down to the water's edge a few small bits of wreckage continued to burn and also a grove of trees and brushwood on the island but before morning every bit of the fire was out and only a heavy smoke showed where the golden wave had once rested no one had thought of retiring again and sunrise found them all worn out and anxious to know what was going to happen next you can rest assured that some of them will be over here sooner or later said dick now they have no place to shelter them and no provisions they will want us to help them out what will you do dick asked dora that depends on captain blossom dora personally i want nothing to do with any of them but some may be badly burnt and they may need medicine and bandages came from nelly we can send them whatever we can spare said tom but i object strongly to letting anybody come here it was decided to remain on guard during the day and all were cautioned to keep within call of the house the bay was scanned for the sight of a rowboat but none put in an appearance i'll wager that those who did escape are sorry they quarrelled with us said sam especially dan baxter answered grace he'll find that living out in the woods isn't so pleasant as it looks by nightfall all grew anxious and sat in front of the house to discuss the situation it can't be possible that all on board were burnt up said dick that would be horrible oh some must have escaped answered captain blossom but they may be suffering from burns or they may have no means of getting here with the ship burnt up and all the tools gone it would be no easy matter to build even the roughest kind of a raft what do you think about some of us rowing over to what is left of the wreck asked sam i was thinking of that but if we do that we had better wait until tomorrow morning 
you can't see much in the dark if i thought anybody was dying for want of aid i'd go over said tom we all know what brutes lesher and baxter are they wouldn't hesitate to go off and leave some of the others to die where they had fallen i think tom is right and some of us ought to go over said dick i'm willing to go announced old jerry we can move around like cats in the dark so they won't know we're near until we tell em you might take some medicines along and some bandages said nellie take a bottle of sweet oil and some flour put in grace they are both good for burns the matter was talked over until midnight and then it was settled that dick tom and old jerry should take the largest rowboat and some bandages and medicines and row over to the vicinity of the fire they were to land on the beach below what was left of the wreck and crawl through the bushes on a tour of discovery if they found that they were not absolutely needed they were to return without making their presence known to the mutineers and dan baxter the two boys and the old sailor were soon on the way care had been taken to wrap cloth around the oars where they slipped in the rowlocks so that the boat moved through the water as noiselessly as a shadow once out in the bay the boys and old jerry pulled with a will and in less than half an hour the beach north of what was left of the wreck was gained they approached with great caution do you see or hear anything whispered tom no answered dick and then the rowboat grated on the sand and all leapt ashore with their medicines and bandages in their pockets and pistols in hand they commenced to crawl through the bushes before long they came to a point from which they could look toward the wreck all was dark and deserted and the air was filled with the smell of burnt wood and water i don't see anybody do you whispered dick nary a soul in sight answered old jerry with equal care they moved around to the other side of the wreck over a mass of burnt brushwood hark said tom they listened and from a distance made out a faint groan that is somebody and in great pain said dick come on and he led the way around a pile of rocks they found a sailor he was propped up against a tree and was suffering from some burns on his legs and feet bostrick said old jerry oh oh help me groaned bostrick piteously give me a drink of water where are the others asked dick gone they left me to take care of myself oh the wretches please help me won't you for the love of heaven yes we will help you answered tom you are certain they have all gone went on dick as he got out some oil and bandages while tom ran for water yes yes where did they go they went oh my legs and feet how they smart they went to the the house lesher said you must have set the ship on fire and baxter said the same they oh what a pain please be careful post bostwick gulped down the water tom gave him that is good what did they say bostwick asked dick as he continued to work over the hurt man they said they were going to pay you back they all went armed that is all but me and schuler schuler was burnt up they said they were going to shoot you down on sight and then run the house to suit themselves i said oh the pain i ah how weak i am and with those words the burnt sailor fell back in a dead faint End of chapter 29chapter thirty of the rover boys on land and sea by arthur m winfield this librivox recording is in the public domain reading by matt Perard. the defense of the cave saved he has fainted poor fellow said dick as he bent over the unconscious form of bostwick we ought to get back to the house at once put in old jerry we must warn the cap'n and the others of what lesher and his crowd intend to do that is true but we can't leave this poor chap here he might die for the want of care came from tom we'll take him along said dick come lift him up as carefully as they could they lifted the unconscious form up and bore it to where the rowboat was lying soon all were on board 
and while tom did his best to revive bostwick dick and old jerry bent their backs to the oars pulling as they had seldom pulled before the beach in front of the house was almost gained when they heard a shot ring out followed by several others just as i feared groaned dick lesher and the others have begun the attack then we'll have to be careful how we land said old jerry if we ain't we may run right into em there was no moon but the stars shone brightly so the beach line was dimly visible in the distance standing up in the bow tom saw a flash of fire from the jungle below the house and heard the crack of a firearm then he saw some dark forms running along the beach our party is making for the cave he cried we had better turn in that direction several other shots followed but they could not tell if anybody was hit in the distance several rum-crazed sailors were yelling like so many indians bostwick came to his senses just as the sand was reached well where am i he asked feebly oh my feet we have brought you with us bostwick answered dick keep still and we will do what we can for you as soon as possible they took the hurt man up and all started for the entrance to the cave who goes there cried a voice out of the darkness is that you sam called back dick dick i am glad you are back they attacked the house and we are going to the cave too yes we know all about it sam we have brought one of the sailors along he is badly burnt are the girls safe i guess so we told them to go ahead answered sam carrying bostwick between them dick and old jerry soon reached the cave where they found the three girls standing in a group each full of dread over what was occurring hardly had they gotten inside when captain blossom came up on a run accompanied by gibson and marney back are you he said i am glad to see it but it may put you in a tight hole hullo so you've got bostwick with you eh everybody get into the cave just as quick as you can once inside of the cave captain blossom commanded everybody to be silent the hurt sailor was carried to the inner chamber where a lantern was lit for it would be impossible to see this light from outside then the girls set to work to make bostwick comfortable has anybody been shot asked tom i got a bullet scratch on the arm answered the captain and morning got a few buckshot in his shoulder but neither of the hurts amounts to anything what do you think the mutineers will do next ransack the house first said sam oh but they are a bad crowd they came on like a lot of demons of course baxter was with them yes but he kept in the background for fear i suppose of being shot with caution one after another left the mouth of the cave to look in the direction of the house no one outside of their own party was visible suddenly a glare lit up the scene growing brighter each instant by the great boots ejaculated captain blossom they have set the house on fire that shows how crazy they are declared dick in their rage they are liable to do anything ten to one they get to fighting between themselves before this is over the house being built of semi-green logs burnt slowly as it was consumed they heard some of the sailors singing and yelling and heard several pistol shots and a scream of pain some of them are coming now announced sam half an hour later everybody get back out of sight cried captain blossom there was a wild scramble and in the rush tom tripped and fell his foot struck a stone which went rolling down to the mutineers feet hi hi there they are came in a rough thick voice where roared back the voice of jack lesher up there among the rocks and bushes let's go after them shoot them down boys they deserve it for burning up the ship up the rocks came the hard drunken sailors accompanied by lesher and with dan baxter in their rear back back all of you stand back cried captain blossom come a step nearer at your peril we are all armed and ready to fire at these words the sailors halted for a moment say cap'n why did you set the ship by fire asked an unsteady voice we had nothing to do with that answered captain blossom we were all over on this island when the blaze started it's a lie came in the voice of lesher of course it's a lie 
added dan baxter they did their best to burn every one of us up it is the truth cried dick now stand back or we shall fire on you come on yelled lesher and fired a pistol at those near the mouth of the cave if ever i get the chance to have you tried every one of you shall be hung for mutiny and murder cried captain blossom and then fired in return the bullet hit dan baxter in the arm and he fell back with a shriek of pain i'm killed i'm killed he moaned and ran down toward the beach then came a volley from the mutineers followed by one from those in the cave oh what a close shave muttered tom a bullet had grazed his ear cutting away one of his curly locks lusher was wounded in the shoulder and in a moment more of the mutineers ran off feeling that they were at a disadvantage they can see us out in the open while we can't see them for the rocks and bushes said one tailor let us wait till morning and so it was decided inside of the cave a council of war was held and it was decided to block up the entrance fronting the bay with large rocks leaving only two loopholes open for watching and for possible shooting all of the wounded ones were cared for and then a watch was set in the meantime bostwick was put at ease and he told the particulars of what happened on the burning wreck and how lesher and baxter had urged the mutineers to attack those at the house the remainder of the night wore away slowly nothing more was seen of the mutineers who had retired to the jungle drank more liquor and gone to sleep baxter with them moaning and groaning over his wound i am going to take a look around said tom early in the morning a look around where asked dick from where we have the signal of distress i don't believe any of the mutineers are in that vicinity i'll go with you put in sam and so it was decided it was an easy matter for the boys to make their way to the gully entrance and with great caution they climbed out of the opening and walked to where the flag of distress floated in the breeze not a sight of the mutineers or dan baxter was to be had in any direction they are either sleeping or else they are afraid we'll shoot at them if they show themselves said tom and he added i am going to climb the tree and take a look around be careful cautioned sam nevertheless he went up the tall tree with his brother once in the tree directly under the flag they took a careful look around the island and then out to sea my gracious sam look screamed tom suddenly and pointed out to the ocean a ship a ship ejaculated sam yes and do you see what kind of a ship it is a warship and an american warship at that hurrah tom we are saved yes yes they are sailing this way our flag of distress has been seen hurrah we must tell the others right away both slid down the tree with all haste as they reached the bottom a gun boomed out across the waves that is to let us know that our signal has been seen said tom won't the others be delighted when they know a ship an american ship at that is so close at hand as quickly as they could they re-entered the cave and ran to where they had left the others the good news spread like lightning a ship an american warship is coming was the cry oh how thankful i am came from dora what shall we do next asked nellie with tears of joy streaming down her cheeks we'll go to the shore and meet the small boat that is sent in answered captain blossom without delay he set out accompanied by dick and old jerry leaving the others to defend the cave during his absence it was nearly two hours before he returned the ship is the cruiser jefferson he said she is bound for honolulu to await orders the captain says he will take us on board willingly and he will do what he can to help us bring those other fellows to justice hurrah cried tom if that is so then our troubles as castaways are over and we are not sorry said grace not a bit sorry and all of the others agreed with her a few words more and i will bring to a close the story of the rover boy's adventures on land and sea the captain of the warship was true to his word and before nightfall all who had been in the cave were safe on board of the jefferson those who were wounded or hurt were given the best of medical attention and everybody was made comfortable 
what attracted me to the islands was the bright reflection in the sky when the wreck was burnt said the captain of the cruiser i thought perhaps that a volcano had become active but at daybreak we saw nothing unusual and were about to turn away when the lookout discovered your flag of distress what will you do about the mutineers and dan baxter asked dick we'll bring them to justice if we can lad when a visit was paid to the burnt house nobody was in sight but in the woods near by a wounded sailor was discovered he was badly hurt and though given every care died two days later while on shipboard you'll have a job finding lusher baxter and the others he said when being attended they said they wouldn't give in to anybody and when they learned the warship was here they rowed away in a boat for one of the other islands they'll hide away until after you are gone if that's the case let them stay here said captain blossom it will be punishment enough for them to live here without any stores they may find those at the cave said tom even so those stores won't last forever said dick yes they will be punished enough for there is no telling when another ship will stop here and take them away more than likely they'll have to remain here a year or two said captain blossom everything of value was taken to the warship and twenty-four hours later the jefferson steamed away on her journey to the hawaiian islands how glad mother will be to learn that i am safe said dora to dick it will be good news to all of our folks answered dick they will welcome us as from the grave i hope we can get a steamer directly from honolulu to san francisco said tom our little vacation has proved unusually long do you think that we will ever see dan baxter again questioned sam i hardly think so said dick after what has happened he will not dare to show his face again but dan baxter did show himself and what he did to harm the rover boys in the future will be told in another volume of the series entitled the rover boys in camp or the rivals of pine island in which we shall meet many of our old friends again it may be as well to mention here that baxter and two sailors escaped from the seven islands just one week after our friends left it the others including jack lusher lost their lives while in a quarrel over the last bottle of rum which the mate had brought with him from the burning wreck their taking off was an awful example of the evils of intemperance it was soon seen that bostwick was not seriously burnt and before the trip to honolulu was over he was able to sit up and to walk a little the wounds of those who had been shot proved slight we are well out of that adventure said tom one evening as the rover boys and the girls sat on the deck in the starlight and i don't know as i want to go through anything like it again all i am thinking of is home sweet home said sam just what was in my mind answered dick how father and uncle randolph and aunt martha will welcome us let us sing put in dora and in a moment more all were singing the first verse of home sweet home and here let us bid them good-bye end of chapter thirty end of the rover boys on land and sea by arthur m winfield